uh, and also uh, not directly a member of the Vienna Circle, but uh, uh, on the fringes of the Vienna Circle, uh, Karl, uh, Karl Popper. Um, but their view that they propounded um, is still to this day held by the practitioners of, uh, of sciences, uh, in, in particular also by the practitioners of, uh, of economics. Um, I want to briefly explain what the basic views of the positivists were um, and take uh, in particular the views proposed by Karl Popper uh, because he, his views became so to speak, the most influential, uh, influential ones. I'm not claiming that what I present now about Popper's views um, will do justice to the entire philosophy that, uh, that Popper developed. 30 years ago I was some sort of expert on Popper uh, in the meantime, I forgot most of, most of it. Um, <laughs> I, want, I want to just uh, highlight, so to speak, the point of Popper's philosophy that became almost a, a popular, popular doctrine. Um, and according to this popular version of Popperism, um, there exist two types of scientific statements. Um, the first type of statement um, refer, is referred to as empirical statements. Um, empirical statements say something about the real world. They refer to something that exists. Um, and uh, empirical statements must, according to Popper, uh, in principle, falsifiable by experience. That is, experience must be capable of showing that this statement is false. Um, if we cannot imagine, so to speak, some observation uh, that would possibly prove something wrong, then this is not a legitimate scientific statement. So all empirical statements um, must be falsifiable, at least in principle, and that is to say nothing else they must be hypothetical. Experience can always be this way or it can be that way. We do not know what it is unless we make certain types of observations and then we decide it is this way or it is, uh, or it is that way. Um, and then as a corollary of this um, statement, um, positivists claim that there is nothing that we can know about reality with certainty or apodictically. Uh, everything that refers to reality is hypothetical. Nothing can be known about the real world with certainty. Um, and the second type of statement that is legitimate according to the positivists are what we call analytical statements. Um, analytical statements say nothing about the reality at all. Analytical statements are nothing more than definitions. Uh, one sign is defined by another sign. Uh, bachelor means unmarried men. Uh, analytical statements can of course be, uh, we can be absolutely certain about them because we have simply defined the words in this way. Um, that bachelor means unmarried man is not a falsifiable statement. It is just simply the way we define um, certain, certain terms. Uh, analytical statements have, so to speak, no cognitive content. We do not recognize anything about the real world by knowing uh, analytical statements. Um, this implies, for instance, that Mathematical statements or logical statements or statements that in philosophy are referred to as ontological statements um, that claim to be absolutely true, apodictically true, do not say anything about real phenomena. That's the view of the pos positivist. Mathematics has nothing to do with the real world. Logic has nothing to do with the real, real world. Uh, those things we can know for sure, but 
again, nothing, no relationship with real phenomena. Um, if there are only these two types of statements, analytical statements and empirical statements, that it follows also from that, that no such thing as ethics uh, is a scientific discipline. Because ethical statements would be normative statements. Uh, say what we should do, what is justified and what is not justified um, for us to do. Uh, those are just matters of taste according to the positivists. No rational ethics uh, exists in, uh, in their view. I will not dwell much on this in my criticism of the positivists. That will be something that I cover in, a, in another lecture where I talk about ethics and, uh, and law. I just want to point that out, um, that they hold this, uh, this view. Then they have also, in the second, second main tenet of the positivists is um, that uh, scientific explanations uh, are always of the same type. They're always if-then statements. Um, if such and such is the case, then such and such will, uh, will follow. If A, then B, or if A, then C. Um, these explanations are, of course, again, hypothetical statements. Um, hypothetical statements need to be tested. Um, if we formulate the hypothesis, if A, then B, and we make the observation that A is indeed the case, and B can indeed be observed, as the hypothesis states, then we speak of a confirmation of the hypothesis. A confirmation of a hypothesis is not a verification. That is, if A is indeed the case and B does follow as the hypothesis hypothesizes, um, then we have not shown that this hypothesis is right. All we have shown is this hypothesis has not been refuted up to this point. It has been confirmed. Why, it has, why did, do we not say that it has been verified or has been proven right? The answer is the hypothesis, of course, refers to all instances of if A. And there are an infinite number of A's. So if we just show in one case of A, B did indeed follow, it does not follow from this that in all instances of A's, B will follow. All we have shown is so far we have not found a refutation of it. The second outcome that can be is if A is then B, A is observed, and then B does not occur. In this case, uh, we would say the hypothesis has been falsified. We know then that at least in the way that we stated the hypothesis, it must be wrong because there is an instance where B simply did not follow, uh, follow A. However, a falsification also does not mean that there is no relationship between A and B. Only what follows from it is that the way we formulate the hypothesis, that exact formulation cannot be right. It might be, however, that A and B are related, except we have to control for another factor. If you control for C, then if A, then B follows. That is, we have in principle, whenever we find a falsification, um, the option of reformulating our hypothesis, introducing another variable that we have not up to now controlled, but if we would control it, then the relationship would hold as we stated it. And if this is falsified, again, we would have the possibility of saying, uh, so A and B are indeed related, as we said, but we have to control not only C, but we have to control also D and E and F and so forth. So a falsification is also uh, a temporary thing, so to speak. It does not definitely show that A and B have nothing uh, to do with each other, but only shows they cannot be related as simply 
as we uh, as we assumed in the uh, from the outset. Um, so, if I summarize the um, the view of the positivist, then we can say their central thesis is um, we have no knowledge about the world that is non-hypothetical. Um, there is nothing that we can know about the world that does not require some sort of testing. Now, before I go into a uh, more detailed critique, um, I want to um, I want to give you some statements about the world, of which I claim uh, that they do say something about the real world. And nonetheless, they are not hypothetical statements. That is, this view is from the outset not exactly very plausible. Um, just to give you a few examples. Uh, no material thing can be at two places at once. Um, so this obviously states something about the real world. Uh, is it, however, something that requires any type of testing? Or would we just say a person who just thinks this needs to be tested uh, simply has not grasped what we have said? Uh, another example. Um, no two objects can occupy the same place. Um, again, I would claim this is something that says something about the the real world. It is not just a definition. Um, nonetheless, is this a hypothesis? What strikes me to be the case is this is certainly not a hypothesis. And nonetheless, we have recognized something that is true uh, about real phenomena. A straight line is the shortest distance between two points. And it says something about real phenomena. Um, is it a hypothesis? Does it require any testing? How would we even test this sort of thing? Um, no, straight, no two straight lines can enclose a space. Um, again, that seems to be true. Um, and certainly not just a mere hypothesis that requires any type of testing. Um, we would not go out and just draw straight lines and another straight line and another straight line and find out whether these two straight lines ever enclose a space. Um, whatever object is green all over cannot be yellow all over at the same time. Um, it strikes me that this is something that says something about the real world. Nonetheless, I would not know what an experiment would have to look like that could show whether the statement is right or wrong. We grasp it, and once we have grasped it, we see this is, of course, a statement that is non-hypothetically true about real phenomena. Um, if A is a part of B, and B is a part of C, then A is a part of C also. Um, again, a real a statement about real things, uh, and nonetheless, certainly nothing that strikes us as being hypothetical. Um, so now give, let me give you some examples where we have clearly hypothetical statements at hand and show in which way they are really different. Um, let's say statements like, uh, children prefer McDonald's over Burger King. Um, we certainly do not know by hearing the statement whether that is true or not. Um, indeed, we would have to collect data and find out uh, whether this is really the case that children prefer McDonald's over Burger King. We could say the opposite, so to speak, of this statement. Children prefer Burger King over McDonald's without stating something that is, on the face of it, nonsensical. Um, worldwide beef consumption to pork consumption is two to one. People consume twice as much beef as pork. 
um, whether that is true or not, we would have to find out. We would have to make observations. Um, and again, it would not be nonsensical to say um, that uh, it is just the other way around, that uh, pork consumption outstrips uh, beef consumption. Germans prefer Spain over Greece as a vacation destination. Um, that might be true, that might be false. We have to find out which one is true. Um, simply by saying it, we do not know what is the case. Um, we could also just claim the opposite and would obviously not speak some nonsense uh, that Germans prefer to go to Greece uh, rather than Spain. Um, on the other hand, recall statements like no two, no straight, two straight lines can enclose a space. If somebody would say, denies this, would say it is false that no two straight lines can enclose a space, uh, then we would immediately say this is from the outset a nonsensical statement. So very different types of statements.